So in this section, we're going to cover another topic, another feature which you can have with PARS, and that is to statically host your own files. So with PARS and the PARS server that I've showed you, we've enabled ourselves to build a backend for our application, for our web application, or for, for perhaps our mobile application. Essentially a database with an API and a bunch of other features. But quite often when building applications, be them web or mobile, we want to host at least one page, perhaps a landing page, or perhaps quite a few other pages on a website. And with PARS, you can do that as well. Well, well you can do that with PARS really because PARS is just sitting upon express.js, which is a web server framework, which again, just sits off of Node. So in this course, in this section, we're just gonna show you how to do some simple hosting of basic web pages using express.js. Now again, this is going to be just a super basic introduction to Express.js. This is only going to be enough to create a landing page or perhaps a few other pages. To learn more, I recommend taking another course on Express.js or if you just go to the expressjs.com website, you can see they've got a getting started guide which just gives you the basics, not much more than what I'm about to show you. And also they have just a, a bit more complicated section in the guide menu item where you can just go uh, into a bit more depth as to, as to what's going on and especially concepts of middleware and uh, template engines. So if you did want to go further into building Express applications, there's plenty of information available for you uh, just on the Express.js website. But again, just in this course, all I'm going to teach you is just to how to do the absolute basics of showing, of rendering just a simple landing page. Okay, so to begin with, let's actually actually just go to our uh, web application which we're hosting on Heroku. So it's actually path server, codecraft example at Heroku app.com. So here's the file here. Okay, so if I actually just go to our website itself, just the root of it, okay, now I'll load it, if I just zoom in here, you can see that if we go to the root of our application, this little text gets printed out. What actually prints out this text? This isn't PARS server, this is actually Express.js. Okay, so if we look at the source code, if we go to index.js, and I scroll down, you'll see this section called app.get and then just the forward slash. This is what's called routing in Express.js and it's actually a concept which you'll find in, in many, many other web frameworks. It's the act of matching a URL to you know perhaps a function which returns the HTML or, or returns whatever you want returned when a user hits this URL or whichever URL matches the first parameter to app.get. So that's what we're doing on line 71. We're saying if any user requests a URL, now forward slash just means the root of the website. If any user requests just the root of the website, then call this function. This function has a request and a response. So the request is the request coming in from the browser to your server and the response would be the response you want to send back to the browser from your server. So what we're saying here is we're saying send a status code of 200 and 200 means everything's fine and actually just send some text. So this is the text that we're sending back. So I dream of being a website. Please star this, the past server we put on GitHub. So that's exactly what's going on when we go to the root of our website on Heroku. So if I go back here, we're going to the root of our website. I don't need to put the slash in. The slash is implied because we're the root of the website. So once we go to this page here, then that calls, then that gets matched to this root. Okay, slash, this is root. And then it calls this function. And in this function, we basically send back the text, I dream of being a website. So that's what's going on and that's how you can just send back a little bit of text when a user hits a particular URL on your website. But let's try another URL on our website. So if we go back to it, 
and I'm going to type slash test. Okay, let me zoom out again. So you can see this is actually just a demo page that's created and it's actually already in your PARS server code. So this is a lot more complicated than our previous example of just I dream of being a website. This is this looks like a real web page. So what's going on here? Now again, if we go back into our source code, you can see that we have another root under the forward slash. We have forward slash test. Now this is something that came from the PARS team's official PARS server example project. And you can see it's a similar, similar format. So you provide a URL which, if matched, will call this function. And this function, again, just has a request and a response. And the response, we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing send file. Okay, so we're doing send file. Not send, which just sends some text. We're doing send file, which, as you can imagine, would send the contents of a file. So what are we actually doing? Well, we're, we're getting the file. Path.join is finding the full path to a particular file. And the file we're getting is something that's inside public test.html. So if we go into, if you see on the left hand side, there's a public folder. If you go into it, you'll find inside there is an assets folder. And just next to it is a file called test.html. So if I open that up, and there you can see there is the actual HTML file which is getting served when we go to slash test in the browser. And you can see inside there, we've got some CSS files that are getting loaded at the top. One has a full URL, so it's going from the uh, cdnjs cloudflare.com. Underneath that is a CSS file that's coming from our local public folder. So it's coming from public assets CSS style.css. So if you look in the public folder, there's another folder called assets. And inside there, there's a folder called CSS. And inside there, there's a file called style.css. And that's what we're requesting in this second line here. So just the same as a normal HTML file, you can request CSS files from anywhere. This is a CSS file requested from another server. And this is a CSS file, which we're going to request from our own server. And we can also just load in a PNG and image files from our images folder. So again, we've got one here in the images folder. And if you scroll to the bottom, we have a JavaScript file, which again is being a local one, which again is being loaded up in our JavaScript folder. And so if we go back to here, so what's going on when we go to slash test, and now if I actually just inspected the page here, and let's have a look at network, click all, let me just refresh the page so we get, get them all. So you can see a couple of things are going on. One, the slash test gets requested from the server, and this is actually what gets returned by that root. So that root that we saw is then returning the HTML that, um, that is in the test.html file. Okay, but in addition to that, the browser is also requesting this style.css, it's requesting this parse logo.png, and it's requesting this script.js from our parse server. So given what I've explained so far, you might expect there to be a root present in index.js for public assets CSS style.css where we send the style.css file back to the browser. Okay, but if I look at our source code, you see we've only got two routes. We've only got these two app.gets. Okay, there's no others. So how is express.js sending back the style.css file, I should expect something along the lines of this. Given what I've just told you, assets CSS style, and then perhaps something along the lines of this. So I would expect something along the lines of this, a root created which would allow us to, which would allow express.js to return the style.css when it's requested by the browser when the browser loads test.html. But we don't see this in the code. But then again, we actually already see this working fine in the browser. So what's going on? What is actually returning style.css? Let me delete that. Now to understand what's going on there, we have to understand the concept of middleware, okay? So again, we won't go too deeply into this concept, 
but if we scroll up, you can see that there's another line on line 64 that says app.use, okay? It's different to app.get, it's called app.use. So what happens is if, if the user requests any URL that starts with slash public, the express static middleware will look in the path provided to it by, its, by the first parameter for that file. Okay, so if we requested slash public slash asim.js, it would look for asim.js in the slash public folder, which you've got here. The folders don't have to match. You can call this whatever you want. You can call this PB or whatever, and you can call the URL, you can call that, again, anything that you want. You can call it assets, whatever you want, okay? It's just matching something to something. So it would look for uh, asim.js in the slash public file system folder. Okay, so what's going on? We go to the browser. So when we request style.css, it's requesting slash public slash assets slash CSS slash style.css. That matches the middleware here because the middleware starts with slash public. It then looks for that file in the public folder, finds it, and if you go back into the browser, it then returns that CSS file to the browser. That's called static file hosting. And it's, most web frameworks have some sort of feature to support it because in addition to returning HTML files or HTML documents, most websites always have to return just probably a fairly large number of CSS files or JavaScript files or, or even images as well. So that's it, that's, re that's, that's a really basic level of knowledge of Express.js just enough, if you can imagine, to create your own landing page, to serve your own HTML file, and also to serve your own style sheets, images, and JavaScript files that are there to support your HTML file. And then also how to map that to a URL. Again, this lecture wasn't supposed to be a deep dive into Express.js, but just enough knowledge so you can host your own uh, web page be a landing page or, or something along those lines in addition to your PARS server itself.